Well, the point is, if you're not ready when the king comes, you're going to kind of be left standing there on the side of the road while somebody else's donkey goes down the parade with the king of kings on his back. Who wants to be the person known as the person who led their donkey out? Boy, you remember good old what's his name? He used to have a donkey. But, yeah, whatever his name was. But Milda, her donkey was there. She knew who it was. She was ready. Wow. It was ready. Now, those of you who have ever been around a donkey know that they're dusty. Sometimes they're a little smell. Sometimes they're a little stubborn. It may be like your spouse, but I don't want to name names. <laughs> you know, on an event like this, where it doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be neat with nice bows and, you know, polished bows. Sometimes it just has to be ready. Now, what would have happened if the knock comes at the door and Two guys are at the door saying, hey, where's your donkey? The Lord needs it. And the reply comes, I need my donkey. It's my donkey. Let him get his own donkey. We see, that's how some of us approach faith. That's how some of, some of us approach life. We say, what's mine is mine, and what's yours should be mine. Oh, there's... A lot of people who want to hold on to their donkey. They think that somehow they created the donkey out of the dust of the earth. And so when the king comes and wants to use it, uh, you know, hey, I don't mind worshiping you from a distance. But when it comes to practical things like let me ride my donkey, I don't think so. But then there are people who are like, yeah, use it, ride it. I'm there. When the disciples, the two unnamed disciples, go to this unnamed person's house and they're fine, just as Jesus had said, a donkey tied up. And they brought it back and put their coats on it. And Jesus rode it into town. What a day. How would you like to have been the person that evening? What would you do today, Bob? Oh, I owe my donkey to the king of kings, lord of lords, prince of peace. How about you? <laughs> See, our acts of devotion, our acts of worship, our acts of faith, don't have to be extraordinary. They don't have to be, oh my gosh, did you know what they did? They must be. Wow. Sometimes, in fact, most of the time, the Lord comes with a gentle, will you join me? Will you be my hands and feet in the world? Will you show up riding on a donkey not at the head of a parade on a big white charger with fanfare, 
<clears throat> with that call in the middle of the night, with that shawl wrapped around the shoulders in the wee hours, will you make coffee? Will you pull weeds? Will you get them on a ride? The idea expressed in this passage, and, and no doubt you've heard this in many different ways, and next year we'll be right back, God willing. Uh, we'll be right back in this passage and riding on a donkey again. But the point of all of this is to show us that by his coming, by all of the actions that he had taken over the previous three years, had led him to the moment where he's there. He's ready. Everything in his life had brought him to that moment in time. But just as the prophet had said, look, your king is here. The very one that you have been praying for, about, and to since the dawn of time. Everything that you have been claiming you're all about is here. Are you ready? This week, in this county, wherever we happen to find ourselves at work or play or school or wherever, there are people who are going to be wandering through life unaware that the parade is passing them by. Sometimes, this week, I would hope that each one of us, whether it's at the grocery store counter or waiting at a traffic light, would be able to look at our brother or our sister and say, here, ride my donkey. Ride it just as Christ rode it in. Not to be proclaimed king, but to be the savior of all mankind. So this afternoon, you get a knock on the door and somebody asks you, where's your donkey? You know where it is. Let it go. Because the king needs it. Amen. Sometimes this week is also called Passion Sunday because it's so easy to go from Palm Sunday and the Hosannas to Easter morning with the Hallelujahs and think nothing else has happened that week. But we know different. We know that this week is holy. So I invite you to stand if you are willing and able as we sing six verse. <laughs>
the cheering stopped. Your work continues. Go into this week, this holy week. Amen. Amen.